I think the biggest strides in autism research in the last 20 years have been a better understanding of autism. But of course now we're moving to a time where it's a lot more about direct engagement between researchers and the autism community. I think sharing our research is always important. But I think what's even more important is to hear from the autism community, to really understand what they want from a search. I was looking forward to it this morning and I really didn't know what it was going to be about. I know nothing about genomics, but now I do. So what is genomics? Um, it's the study of our genome, and what is our genome? It's all of our genetic code. When we're thinking about genetics, I like this analogy that compares genetics to a cookbook. It's kind of like our recipe for life. There's no one gene for autism, but there are possibly genetic changes that increase your risk. It's been difficult to develop therapies because autism is so diverse. It's different between people, but it's also different at different ages. What we're trying to do is to predict how a person develops across age and really identify who might actually benefit most from certain therapies. We had a cohort of children who had movement disorders. We recruited them to this project with GMI where we did whole genome sequencing on them to try and see if we could find a cause for their problem. The most difficult part of my education was the beginning. I attended six different play schools. I became a serial preschooler. <laughs> In my leaving search, from not being able to speak, I managed to get an honours in English with an A1. Went on to study genetics in Trinity College. I am now currently doing my PhD in Galway. We really need to do the best research we can. And the best way we can do that is to listen to the autism community. And that's really what we did today. More information, more involved with the parents and community connecting the research team with the community <coughs> maintaining those connections and then connections between genetics and say microbiome. Having a one page document um, plain re English which uh, presents where research is at. Uh, research maybe might be able to change public perception about the strengths and qualities of autistic people in us <laughs> and sometimes not values. Protecting ourselves and protecting genetic information. Autism affects not just the brain, but across everything, you know, for say like psychology, general health, uh, society, and I think having an interdisciplinary approach that everyone can share information. Research in itself is intrinsically valuable and that families can gain something intrinsic from research just by like joining in and feeling validated in the fact that they're being heard by researchers. It's all a process and it's all a thinking process. We're a big collective brain at the moment and we're all thinking about autism, autism genomics, how the research can be better, how people can get more involved. I was talking mostly to parents and the parents really just wanted to know what researchers were finding out. And that's something we, that's very achievable that we can do. We can make our research more accessible. It opens up all sorts of possibilities for kids for the future. In 10 years time we might be far better positioned to help people than we are today. Days like this are really important because involving people in research breaks down barriers between even maybe people's perception of what research might mean. We really got to grips with understanding the importance of research participation, research involvement. Public and patient involvement or PPI as it's now becoming known is really a new way of doing research. I think as soon as people actually start to do it, they realise the benefits straight away. And today is a perfect example of people seeing that benefit in action.